In this lesson, we're learning what is a ratio. A ratio is simply a comparison, so looking at the similarities and differences of different quantities. And what is a quantity? Well, a quantity is just an amount. So maybe you have two green apples and your friend has four red apples. So the ratio is two green apples to four red apples. It's just comparing the quantities or the amount of something. Now that you understand what a ratio is, let's look at the two different types of ratios. The first type of ratio is called part to part. Part to part is when you are looking at the different parts of a total amount of object. So let's look at the picture to the right of the fruit. We see that we have strawberries and bananas. So there is a total group of fruit here. But I know in this total group, there are three strawberries. And I know there are four bananas. These are part-to-part -part comparisons. So now we need to remember that when we're looking at ratios, we're making a comparison. So how can we write the strawberries and the bananas as a comparison? If you look at the example I have here below, we would say in a math sentence, for every blank strawberry, there are blank bananas. How many strawberries do we have? You should have guessed three. And how many bananas are there? Four. So for every three strawberries, there are four bananas. This here is our ratio because we are comparing the number of strawberries or the quantity of strawberries to the quantity of bananas. Let's move on by looking at the second type of ratio. This type of ratio is called a part to whole. This type of ratio is different because in the first one, we were just looking at the two different parts. How many strawberries, how many bananas. This one, we're going to compare a part or a piece of a whole. A whole is also known as the total. You should remember this when we're looking at things like fractions. But the whole is a total. So we will look at the total number of fruits. So if we counted this, we would see that we have three strawberries. That is our part. Because we're only counting a part of a total whole. Then what would our whole be? Did you guess seven? Seven is correct because we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fruits. And that is our total number of fruits or our whole. So if we wanted to write a sentence for comparing a part to whole, we would say for every blank strawberries, how many strawberries do we have? Three. So for every three strawberries, there are blank total fruits. And we said that our total is seven total fruits because there are three strawberries and four bananas. And if we count them all together, the total is seven. Again, this is another type of ratio or comparison of quantities. 
On the next slide, we're going to look at how we should write our ratios. So writing ratios, there are three different ways that you can write them. And this will depend on your situation. But for now, let's just learn the three different ways. We're going to look at our example with the strawberries and bananas and write some ratios. Before we look at the work with our fruits on our previous chalkboard, let me model for you the three different ways we can write ratios. You can write them as A to B or A colon B. You also say this as A to B or as a fraction, A over B. These are the three possible ways that you can write ratios. Now, let's try writing some ourselves. First, we will start with our part to part. And we can refer back to our previous chalkboard. If I wanted to write the part to part ratio using the three different ways, how would I write this? If I look at my numbers or my parts, I see that my quantities are three and four. So I can write them as three to four, three colon four. Remember, we also read the colon as two. It just looks different. And the last one I can do is I can write it as a fraction, three over four or three fourths. Now, let's look at our part two whole. And again, we are going to use the previous chalkboard to help us out. Now remember, in this one, you're comparing different quantities than the part to part because we're looking at our part to whole. Do you remember what a whole it represents? If you guessed total, you are correct. It is the total amount. So how can we write our ratios for the part to whole? Remember, our numbers for this are three and seven. Did you figure out the three ways we can write it? You should have said three to seven, that's in word form, or using our colon, three colon seven, or three to seven, or last as a fraction, three over seven or three sevenths. For this last part of the lesson, let's look at where ratios exist in the real world. Believe it or not, we use ratios every single day. Let's look at some examples. Think of when you go to the grocery store. You see lots of different ratios. One of the ratios you will see all the time is when there are products that are 3-4 or 2-4. For example, potato chips. We often see bags of potato chips with a sign next to them that reads two, four, five dollars. This is a ratio. We are comparing two different quantities. There are two different bags of chips, and together their total is how much? Five dollars. We can actually use division with our ratios to figure out how much each bag of chips will cost. Let's try figuring it out ourselves. So first, we're going to draw our division symbol. Then remember the dividend, which is our total, $5, goes under the division symbol. 
and then our divisor goes on the outside, which is two. We have to see how many times two goes into five. So I know two goes into five two times, and two times two is four, and I will subtract these numbers. Remember though, because we're dividing by a decimal, we need to move the decimal to the top where the quotient is. Sometimes we forget about this and that will give us the wrong answer. So let's do it now before we subtract. Let's move it up here where the quotient is. Now I can subtract. I have five minus four, which I know is one. Then I bring down my zero. Two can go into 10 five times. I subtract and I get zero. So there is no remainder. So we see that our quotient or our answer is 2.5. Mm, but there's one issue because we are talking about money. We don't say we have 2 point five dollars do we no we do not we say we have two dollars and fifty cents you just need to add the zero so it makes sense because we're talking about money great job let's look at one more example this time using recipes Say that I want to bake some yummy shortbread cookies. Well, this recipe calls for three cups of flour, two cups sugar, and one cup of butter. And it makes 15 cookies. But what if I want to bake cookies for my entire class and I need 30 cookies. Well, I can simply use multiplication and ratios to help me. Let's first write our ratio. I know that I have three cups flour, two cups sugar, and one cup butter. Remember, ratios are a comparison of quantities or the amount of something. So I see that I'm comparing the number of cups. Let's write a ratio. Now in this one, we're comparing three numbers. So it makes sense to use our colons. So we can say three, which is our flower, to two, two, one. We would not want to write this as a fraction because it really wouldn't make much sense. So for every three cups of flour, I need two cups of sugar and one cup of butter. But remember, I want to double this. We know that if we double something, we can multiply. What number do we multiply by? Did you guess two? Because that is correct. Let's multiply each number by two to find a new ratio to make enough cookies for 30 students. So first we have three times two, six. Don't forget to bring down your colon for your ratio. Next we have two times two, four. Again, bring down your colon. And last we have one times two, two. Your new ratio to make cookies for 30 students is six to four to two, which means you'll need six cups flour, four cups sugar, and two cups of butter. We use ratios in the real world all the time. Next time you're out, look around and see if you can find some. Thank you for watching the video. We had an amazing teacher make this video for us and they did a great job. 
If you like the video and want to support me in making more videos, please subscribe and watch our other YouTube videos. You can also support me by going to magemath.com and purchasing the MageMath video game. It is a really fun game that combines math and fantasy adventure into one awesome video game. We also have lots of free content on the website like math escape rooms and worksheets, so check it out!